Sonny Bassett on a Sunday afternoon at the yard here in Baltimore. A big crowd on hand and a nice early summer day to enjoy a baseball game. Final of the series. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Thorne and welcome for the Orioles today. They try and avoid a sweep. The Angels have not swept the Orioles here in Baltimore since 2000 and two a long time the Orioles have been swept only once this season three game series that was by Toronto earlier this year problem for the Orioles right now it's about the bats trying to get them going and get some runs to support what's been some really good pitching and this downfall in offense all started on that trip to New York counting the New York games here's what the Orioles have done since May 5 batting average is 218 13th over that span the runs per game down to next to last at three home runs fourth at 14 but they've all been solo shots the OVP that is 14th next to last and the on base plus slugging percentage 13th at 653 the record over that span three and eight. And it's now about some of these Oriole bats, Jim Palmer, getting it going because the pitching's been there. Yeah, well, it started in New York because the uh, the Mets and the Yankees, two of the best uh, pitching teams in baseball, and uh, over five runs in April, uh, under uh, three runs again in May, five and nine record in the month of of May uh, last year. The Orioles did not have a losing month, so it's kind of like living in South Florida. Uh, in the rainy season, you yeah, know it's going to rain. You just don't know when. And home runs are very much like that. And uh, the guy pitching for the Angels does not throw a lot of home runs. Six in 26 starts last year. He's thrown one in his five starts. So maybe they'll get some runs another way today. We'll have to wait and see. And uh, a major league debut. Mike Wright will be on the mound. What a big day for him. He will take the mound when we come back to throw his first major league pitch. By Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. It is an early summer day. Let's take a look at our BGE home game time temperature on this Sunday. It is 79 degrees. It is humid and no wind at game time. BGE Home, Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? Starting lineup for the Angels who are after the sweep. Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols. I buy Giovatella, Freeze, Joyce, Perez back in catching, and Kraus. You see Eric Ibar, the last five, one of the hot bats in their lineup. 
Yeah, take a look at the 25 year old uh, right hander uh, coming up from uh, Norfolk where he was three and oh so try to relax because this is your first major league start absent pitch in what eight or nine days stayed down in the zone. Uh, yeah, he throws 92 to 96 with a good sinker slider probably his best secondary pitch also has a curveball and a change up and that's why you need to command those uh, uh, the Angels uh, they have been winning 13 out of their last 16. But again, uh, they can be pitched to. You just have to. He's got the stuff. It just will he have the poise? Will he uh, be able just to control not only his physical pitches, but also the the emotional part of it? Ten days since he last pitched, so a long uh, layoff from Triple uh, A. Added to the roster last November, minor league record 32 and 21, ERA of 399, 91 games, 87 starts. In five minor league seasons. And now Mike Wright about to embark upon that journey that he has longed for, and that is pitching at the major league level. Calhoun will lead it off against him. Calhoun has had a one for seven in this series. And right with the delivery, and that one will be fouled back. Ball will be picked up by the Bat Boys, taken back over to the Orioles dugout. And uh, his first pitch baseball will be kept for him. Yeah, the other thing, of course, you have to rely uh, on Caleb Joseph, who will be doing the catching today. So he'll try to steer Mike Wright as far as what pitches they want to throw. Calhoun, one of the hotter hitters. Pitch to him, and that'll be taken for yeah. a strike. Well, that'll work right there, Gary. Yeah. 96 with a lot of late life, and and it was an easy 96. That's what they liked about Mike Wright in spring training. They 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 let him pitch out of the bullpen. Velocity went up. He carried it off down in Norfolk. He, he can throw close to 100 pitches today. 0 2 delivery on the way will be fouled back. For right uh, this season, that 3 0 mark, the left handers hit 238 off him at Triple A. No home runs by lefties. Right handers 221 with two home runs. He held opposing hitters in Norfolk to a 227 average. And he's gotten up there to 97 miles an hour on the gun here and is against his first batter. 0 2 delivery on the way, and the breaking ball will miss just a little bit inside. Fans wanting that strikeout here for his first at bat, and he came close. Well, anybody you ever talk to that comes uh, to the big leagues, they'll say a lot of times they might have swung at that pitch at Triple A, Double A. But Calhoun lays off it. Not a bad slider up and in. 1 2 delivery on the way. That one's going to miss outside. He surrendered nine walks in 30 innings, struck out. A batter per inning this year, 30 strikeouts in 30 and two thirds innings, five fewer hits than innings pitched. Number of pitchers always trying to stay at, keep people off base. Two ball, two strike count, timeout asked for at the plate by Calhoun. So, what the Angels are going to do, and they uh, they probably had to, uh, you know, talk to people that face Mike right down at AAA, is they're going to hit off the fastball. 2 2 broken bat bloop second base that'll be handled for the out by Pierce Yeah, nice little play by Steve Pierce good to reaction he's well played well at second Snyder Jones and young that is the outfield Machado Hardy Pierce Davis and then Caleb Joseph going to catch all the games in this uh, series I think they just felt that uh, they he's caught him before so it feels more comfortable nice move by Dan Iasonia the home plate umpire with the right obviously <laughs> Mind going all over the place. I saw you went on, took the baseball from you, said, Let me take that for you, son. I'm going to get over to the dugout. Your first out in the big leagues, major league level, and uh, took the ball and flipped it over to the Orioles' dugout. Here is Mike Trout. Trout has had a big series. He's gone four for nine with a home run, two RBIs. He's had his strikeouts in the series, but he's provided the offense. He's hitting 300 now. Ten home runs up among the leaders. In that department. All right, pitch time will be in. He's tied for the American League lead and runs scored now with the 28. Yeah, and he's, he's led well the American. The yeah, the American League and runs scored the last three years. So not only does he get on, but incredible speed. The Fast Orioles did throw up. him out yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, they pitched out and Caleb Joseph, perfect throw. So he's seven out of nine if he gets on trying to steal bases. And then the home run came right down the right field line. Trout third and homers with 10. Cruz and Teixeira are ahead of him. Cruz has got 15. That'll be fouled off the other way. Now the Orioles really need to get the offense going. They're asking Wright to do what the starters have been doing for them. 
and that's hold the opponent down to give them a chance to win and uh, then hope that the Orioles can put some runs up on the board against this uh, Angels ball club. 2 2 delivery on the way and Trump goes down swinging. <laughs> well that'll get your attention. He went right up the ladder not only uh, as far as velocity but also uh, the location of the ball. <laughs> 98. Mm. Mike Trout's trying to catch up and for strikeouts I mean 184 of them last year and he still was the unanimous MVP. So he does strike out but that was <laughs> that was a pretty impressive pitch it got my attention. That was well by Trout before he got that bat going. Here's Albert Pujols the DH pitch will be taken four strikes on so your first major league start you get to go against Trout and Pujols two of the first three hitters that you face two seam four seam slider change up. Oh one delivery on the way and that one will be down low for a ball one yeah, ball one strike everybody down. that I talked to that's seen him pitch and, and be when you are six six and you have to understand he, he ended up being five and eleven last year he was one and nine and then went four and two three and oh this year so seven and two in his last what about 13 starts at triple A and what they've said and we've just seen it is that maybe he telegraphs the change up a little bit back to back change ups I think Caleb Joseph would like to establish something else and and a lot of people think that maybe he'll be better at the back end of the uh, of the bullpen because he certainly has a power arm. Bulls goes after it. It goes to right field. Young moves over, and he's got it. So for Mike Wright, a successful debut at least for an inning. He's in the majors now. He retires the side in order. Inning. Welcome to the Major Leagues. Take a look at the old starting lineup brought to you by Southwest. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. Machado, Paredes, Jones, Young, Davis, and Pierce, Hardy, Snyder, and Joseph this season. Jimmy Paredes continues to be the Orioles' most consistent hitter. And they'll face Gary Richards, uh, who's back on track with 13 game winner last year. Uh, tore the uh, patellar tendon covering first base up in Boston in August. Most people thought he should have made the All Star team, but he certainly had that kind of career and it really is back on track. Look at the ERA, very low. Uh, 165 batting average, only 18 hits, 31 in the third innings. And as we mentioned, he threw, uh, what, six home runs and 26 starts. He's thrown one home run in his first five starts. So throws very hard, got a power curveball. Manny Machado will take the pitch inside. Manny had an 0 for 4. In the ball game last night, that would end his 20 game streak of reaching base. Also ended a hit streak for him. And he has put up solid numbers. And the pitch, that's going to be in there for his strike. The Orioles have done a good job against Richards. They have won both of the starts he's made against them with a 7 3 1 earned run average. And Machado, after a breaking ball down and away, and he's got a 1 for 4 against the 
Angels starter. The Orioles will see what they can do with him here today. Yeah, well, these are Sunday uh, afternoon baseball games. They got Pineda, and he struck out 16 last Sunday. There's, Check there's swing. Did he go? Check it first. Nope. Lance Barksdale. Well, the one thing that uh, Richards can do, uh, they they kind of yo-yoed him when he first came up. They gave him the ball last spring in 2014, and he became one of the best starters in the American League until the injury. A lot of two-seam fastballs. He can throw strikes. Some he had struggled with. There's another curveball. But he can, and he just has tremendous movement. So it's not only the velocity, Gary, the ball is moving all over the place. It's his seventh career start against the Orioles. The ERA is the highest against any opponent. 3 2 delivery on the way, and that one will be fouled back by Machado. Manny's had the one for eight in this series. As we go through the ball game, we'll take a look at some of the numbers and what's happened to them over the last month. For the Orioles, as far as what they've done at the plate. 3 2 delivery on the way, and there's a leadoff walk, and the Orioles will take that. Yeah, they didn't even get one from uh, Shoemaker yesterday. Take a look at the defense, and there is no such defense for walks. Joyce Trout Calhoun, that is the outfield for the Angels. Freeze Ibar Giovatella. Mark Krause with a big hit last night. He's over at first base with Polos doing the DHing, and then uh, Carlos Perez. He's done a nice job for him. Seems to be the regular catcher. Here's Jimmy Paredes, a one for seven as the DH in the series. He's got a one for three against Richards. Infield moved in a couple of steps at double play depth. Paredes will take the fastball. That's going to be up high for Paredes. It's about offense. You can see his numbers a lot of doubles, triples, home runs. Doesn't really matter. Switch hitter. Got to hit the first time up last night, and then uh, Shoemaker really made some nice adjustments. Pitched very well for the Angels. He hit 385 in April, Paredes did, and 321 so far this month. That pitch is going to be a pie, and Richards having some trouble. Ibar sees it, and he's on his way in just to kind of break the spell here and quiet this thing down. Yeah, you had the shortstop coming in from one direction, and your catcher walking out saying, hey, wait a minute. It's not getting into a throwing contest. Mike Wright hit 98 to the fastball that struck out Mike Trout. Because at the end of the day, the, the big adjustment he made was be able to, because of his stuff, just throw strikes. The ball does not end up if he throws it for the middle of the plate in the middle of the plate because of the movement. Duo delivery on the way, and he got that one where he wanted it. Paredes with the big cut. Richards coming off uh, a 3-1 win against Houston. He gave up only a, a run and one hit. In six and two thirds innings against Houston, through 110 pitches in the ball game, he lost his first start of the year to Houston. Since then, hasn't lost the ball game. He's had three wins and a no decision, and the ball club has gone four and one in the starts Richards has made this year. Two ball, two strike count on Paredes. He's giving up nothing, and the left-handers hitting 169, the right-handers 159. The overall batting average against Richards is 165. 2 2 delivery on the way and a little tapper. Givatella goes for one. That's all they're going to get. Good slide made by Machado to make sure there could be no relay, but you would not have gotten Paredes. Yeah, and uh, Eric Ibar knows the ball is so slow developing because the ball's hit. Right there, Manny gets down there quick, part of breaking up a double play, and then Ibar says, uh huh, you're not getting me, but. That ball. So that'll bring Adam Jones to the plate. Adam with the three for eight and a home run. Lifetime off Richards. Adam has seen the average drop from a 400 April to a 236 so far here in May. Still 11th best average in the American League. And a half swing ground ball. Ivar Giovatella, plenty of time, and they turn the double play. So no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base and no score after one.
time uh, later in today's game brought to you by Miller. We come into this uh, Sunday with the Orioles now four below 500. They are five games out in the American League East. The Yankees ended their skid with a victory yesterday. They're in first two ahead of Tampa Bay three and a half over Boston. Toronto's lost four in a row. They are five games out along with the Orioles. Tigers lead the Central well, tied with Kansas City record wise now. Minnesota's a couple behind and Houston leads these Angels by four and a half. Quite a race in the West. Houston's won four in a row. The Angels have won five in a row. Eric Ibar, the hot bat, hitting safely 11 of the last dozen games at a 409 clip. He drew the accolades of Orioles manager Buck Showalter this morning. Showalter just kind of talking about the game yesterday in the series, and he said, kind of to the side, you know, that Ibar, he's a really good player. Pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Well, he's a, a superb shortstop. I mean, he gets the ball, strong, accurate arm. He started the rally in the seventh. Just a slow roller. But they played back, and Manny had to come a long way for it, and then couldn't make the play. And, and then, what, a couple of more infield hits, and then some real hits, and then one nothing, we end up losing six to one. One of those type of games. Right, that's a one ball, two strike count. Pitch on the way to Ibar is up and in. That two will gain your attention at 94. So they come out of the bullpen and you know where the adrenaline is. It's really pumping. And now you sit down and now you've got to pitch. They're going to make some adjustments. They know he's got a good arm. He proved that in the first inning. And he's thrown curveballs, change ups here. So trying to get to those secondary pitches. 2 2 delivery on the way and just slap that foul. Switch hitter is hitting 323 right and 252 left. Ivar, one of the probably one of the few hitters in a cleanup spot in Major League Baseball, doesn't have a home run. Angels have hit 30. They've given up 36 dingers on the year. Here's the 2 2 delivery. Ivar, a comebacker. Wright's got it. He'll underhand it over to Davis. Ivar out of there. Well, we need to say this is Wright's uh, debut. Take a look at. The Orioles last five debuts at the Major League level. Yeah, Gosman, uh, that was against Toronto, and he got a loss. McFarland, the no decision. Steve Johnson, Stevie Wonder, with nine strikeouts. Miguel Gonzalez, still remember that night, because he born in Mexico, grew up in Southern California. That was against the Angels. And then Wei and Chen, who's in his fourth year with the Orioles, has had a nice 16 wins last year. Now add right to that list. Giovatello one for seven in the series. Angels second baseman. He will foul that one back. Giovatello home run 14 RBIs. He has picked up nine walks, 14 strikeouts. So he puts the ball in play and a real solid 275 batting average for him. He was another one of those guys. Uh, Baldo Jimenez made a great pitch. He hit a little roller and Hardy couldn't uh, get him because he can run. Angels have had their troubles uh, scoring, much like uh, the Orioles have, but the Angels have just been able to eke out an inning here and there that provides enough runs to put a ball game away. One ball, one strike count. Orioles have modified infield shift on here. And the pitch will be up a little bit inside. The Orioles come in fifth in average and seventh in the league in runs. The Orioles are now fourth in home runs. They led the majors in home runs for a number of weeks. The Angels are 13th in average and right now dead last in runs. 2 1 delivery on the way down the line in right field. Young going over near the warning track and he'll put it away. Two down. Celebrate summer at Oriole Park. Pick up the new Birdland Summer Six Pack. Any six games, your choice. Savings up to 20% off. Cost of single game tickets. You can pick great rivalry games, popular promotions like the Bobblehead T shirt, fireworks nights. Get all the info you need at Orioles.com slash six pack. Two down, nobody on here's freeze. Three for eight, a homer. That's his RBI in this series. A yeah, really good high ball hitter, and that's what he got off Zach Britton, who doesn't get hit very hard, but uh, last night did because he just, as he put it, didn't make a whole lot of pitches. He's, you know, Zach pitched so. Frequently last year because the Orioles on their way to 96 wins lately, maybe three, four days in between. So he's going to mm -hmm. have to figure out how to be sharper. But 
Brees oh, also went to right field, yeah. as did Trout. It's the old sinker ball theory, isn't yeah. it? That the more you throw, the better you are. If you're a sinker ball pitcher and you have time off, your arm's too fresh, too alive, and the ball stays up. True or not, that's an adage in baseball. Well, it was last night, and the first four batters got the same pitch 95 belt high, and that's not where Zach Britton likes to pitch. Freeze 0 2 delivery to him by Wright, swings and misses. Wright's got two strikeouts, and he has retired the first six batters face. Young will come to the plate when we come back. My dad, Roy Robertson, and I'll be back pretty soon. Go Orioles. On Sundays, the Orioles salute those who are defending this country, and mom and dad uh, on hand, uh, Kim and uh, Roy, and the message delivered family from Cumberland, Maryland, Airman First Class Chad Robertson. Delman Young will lead it off as we go to the bottom half of the second inning. Delman had uh, has had an 0 for 3 in this series. Good 314 batting average here in his home yard so far. Delivery will be up high to him for a ball. Here's another bat the Orioles need to get going for Young. He started the season out with a 357 April. He's hitting 200 in May. That's in there, one on one. Well, we have another uh, cleanup hitter that has yet to hit a home run. Yeah, how about that? But his, you know, runner and scoring position numbers have been terrific. In fact, the whole Oriole team until the last couple of days have done a nice job. Not a lot of opportunities. Yeah, we uh, were looking here yesterday. The Orioles did not have an at bat with a runner in scoring position. Not one. And what three on Friday night? Yep. Not but Jared Weaver. One two will go to second. That's a base hit. Good hard. Giovatella had no chance, and the Orioles get the leadoff man on now in each of the first two innings. Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, James Frazier from Baltimore. You've won 500 for being selected. You get 500 more for every Orioles home run hit today. Play baseball buck scratch offs. Win up to 50,000. Enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Visit mdlottery.com slash baseball. So the Orioles on with the first hit of the ball game. Richards retires 67 percent of leadoff batters so far this season, but not in this game. Here's Davis. This has had uh, an 0 for 7 in the series. He's one for one. Uh, Richards, and that one will be fouled back, almost picking off Pierce in the on deck circle. Our American standard: who's hot, who's not? You see Chris Davis against the Angels with the big numbers. And Cole Calhoun, not those numbers. Celebrate the season with the American Standard All Star event. Visit midatlanticcomfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Davis on the big cut fouls it back. Yeah, those are pretty good pitches to hit, and that's why he chased them. You can see 0 for 7. Uh, they've gone soft, hard, in. That's where you like to pitch, Chris. Out over the plate. 
Well, he's going to get his hits. And he'll hit them anywhere. You know, you think you make a good pitch off the outside corner and it's into the left center field bleachers. Oh, two count. Richards bears one in that's low. Here at Camden Yards for this Angels right hander, three career appearances, one as a starter. He's 0 and 1. ERA in this ballpark is 4.35, covering just 10 and a third innings. Only start came here last season at the end of July for Garrett Richards. Yeah, out of the uh, University of uh, Oklahoma, number one draft choice. One two delivery on the way and that one four feet out in front bounced all the way to the backstop. Davis getting out of the way. Perez the catcher couldn't get out of the way and that was buried. That is a wild pitch. Yeah now you work on this just about every day of spring training but not this type of pitch. You know they throw balls to you you've got to block them It's so far out in front of base. I mean it comes right up he tries to center it with his chest and gets him in the mask. That is the fifth wild pitch. Richards has thrown. Keep that in mind. The Orioles base runners will. Davis now 2 2. Schiff still on in the infield. That ball cranked. That's towards the gap. Calhoun coming over makes the catch. Runner tags will not go. Calhoun solid throw into third and Davis is retired. Well, the outfield position perfectly for Calhoun to get there as that one was in the gap in right center. Yeah, he's gotten uh, very good jumps. Trout plays deep, can go from side to side as about as well as anybody because of his speed, and then Calhoun kind of anchors over in right center. I mean, he got to that ball easy. And yep, he could just, he I mean, when you look, when you're pitching and you turn around, the ball hit like, you know, I mean, snap of your fingers, and your guy's already moving, you know they're getting a good jump on the ball. If they're not, you're going, uh oh, where do I back up? I got a problem. <laughs> yep. So, a runner uh, still on at second base. And the pitch will be taken by Pierce inside. So the Orioles here in the series now 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. Pierce in that department this year with a 3 for 16. And he gets a chance to pick up an RBI. Giovatella is holding the runner young close at second. He's right behind the bag. 1 0 delivery to Pierce in there for a strike. Steve hoping that this series will get that bat going. 2 for 3. For the home run and the RBI coming off it. He started the season in the first week just red hot and uh, then quickly cooled off. He was three for seven with two home runs, first two games, and back, as we said, on the close hold is young. They yeah, almost threw it into center field. Yeah, Vitello, not that tall a guy, but he snares it. I mean, Garrett Richards is his stuff guy. I mean, he's going he's going to heave it up there, and he's got great stuff, and it's going to move all over the place. Power breaking ball. He'll bounce it every once in a while. Popped up down the line, right field, foul territory for the moment. Kraus will stay there and put it away. Runner tags. Kraus heaves it. Missed the cutoff, man, and that thing goes away. A run scores. So Pierce retired, and there are two down. Those are the kind of plays coaches will mark in their book or after the game or tomorrow to talk to the player about. I mean, Kraus, that throw wasn't necessary. Young wasn't going anywhere. Just get it back into the cutoff, man, and you're okay. You overthrow it like that, and you create an opportunity for a run to score. So, two away. That'll bring up Hardy. Hardy's had a two for six in the series, a homer, and the one RBI. JJ getting back into game condition after the time missed with that shoulder. He's looking for his first hit with the runner in scoring position. He's 0 for 8 on the year. No score in the ball game. Leadoff man on Young, and he's out there waiting at second base. Hardy last year hit 315 in these situations. A lot of movement on that one, but it missed. Yeah, pretty much out over the plate inside middle. That's the power zone now. Last year, and you mentioned hitting over 300 runners in scoring position, he could hit balls and did hit balls to right field. He wasn't as much a pull hitter in 2014 as in years past. There's another breaking ball. This one, you know, fastball hitter, 
Unless you hang a breaking ball, that's how you try to get him out. When you use your fastball, you try to come way in. Richards will turn 27 in a week. He's got 27 wins, 18 losses, career numbers. One ball, one strike count on Hardy. Big lead at second for Young in the pitch. Up and in. Trying to set him up for an inside fastball. Missed with it, two and one. Well, you knew Garrett Richards was always going to get an opportunity because in the minor leagues for the Angels, again, a number one draft choice, you'll always be uh, projected and get your innings. He was 34 and 11. So one in the minor leagues for the Angels. Do one pitch on the way, and that's going to miss inside. He's struggling a little bit with that strike zone here through the first couple of innings of the game. Three ball, one strike count on Hardy. His strikeout totals at the majors have been. Uh, Pretty astounding. 350 strikeouts in the starts that he's made. 350 to big leagues. 3 1 delivery on the way. Cut the inside corner with it. Well, that'll work right there. Wild with a fastball, and you drop off the 3 1 breaking ball, throwing 96. And when you do that, you just create havoc for the hitter because if you're J.J. Hardy, you have no idea what's coming. Three ball, two strike count. Young off second base. Hardy will pop it up. High sky, a lot of glare. Perez says, I don't care, and makes the catch. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a runner left on. On this Sunday, couple innings complete, no score. Uh, Mike Trout for the first time, the uh, reigning MVP of the American League. Fastball one and one, two and one. So you know he's looking heater, can't quite get to it. And then the zoom ball, 98 up and away. First major league strikeout for Mike Wright. First inning here against the uh, MVP of the American League. Six in a row retired in his major league debut. He's got Joyce Perez and Kraus coming up. Here in the top of the third inning. Joyce an 0 for 3. The second start he's had in the three games played here in the series. 11 home runs against the Orioles. That's the most he's had against any ball club. Ties him in that department against a single team. Wright's delivery to him will be a strike call. 314 hitter in this ballpark. All those games he played with the Rays. Yeah, I was looking at that number. If he played for Buck Showalter, he'd never miss a game here because Buck believes in certain guys just hit better in certain venues. Good jam shot right there. Had to pull his arms back. Pierce at second makes the play. So uh, one away. Can he equal the success that was had by Johnson Gonzalez? In their outings, a couple non decisions there, and those starts made. And uh, Mike Wright added to the top of that list. Kind of yep. surprising there have been that few over that period of time. 
on the game. Gal Gonzalez did it in Anaheim with about 40 of his friends and family there. Yeah. And it was an impressive game. I mean, the Angels, you know, the last couple of years, they certainly, I mean, last year they won more games than anybody. 98 let the league in run score. Of course, he did this about, what, four years ago. Ground ball may have broken the bat on that one. Manny Machado up for the Alvin Perez for the catcher. At the minor league level uh, in his career, right, not particularly fly ball or ground ball. The numbers are almost even at 50% each in recording outs. Two down, nobody on. Kraus, who's getting the start at first base in the ball game, was a DH yesterday. He's had a one for three RBI here in the series. Yeah, you look at his uh, hits per innings, and I've always heard that. Saw him pitch in spring training, but you don't really get to see him very much. He's always, if you look at the hits per innings, that they're up above the innings pitch, which usually tells you he pitches to contact, so maybe he does sink it. But we have seen the four seamer get to 98 today, which is why they say, okay, if he can't repeat his wind up being 6'6, six, six, he certainly could be maybe a back end of the bullpen power guy. Oh, one inside. Well, Wright knows, I mean, as Buck Showalter said before the game, he said, listen, I know he's coming up here. To try and put on a show and earn himself a spot and not get sent back down. Buck said we'll see, but the way things are going, that door is certainly open. You've got Tillman, whether he can start Tuesday or not with the back stiffness problems remains up in the air, but Norris unavailable to pitch in his last start, the bronchitis situation. So it's a uh, right now it's an open rotation. Two ball, one strike delivery on the way, and that'll be up high. The Orioles have not named their starters for the upcoming series against Seattle that will start on Tuesday. See what I like about Mike Wright, Mike Wright is that a couple of times he's gotten into these counts behind hitters and he walks off the back of the mound and takes a moment. And it's not you really like to see that. 3 1 delivery on the way and then throws a strike and then relaxes and then comes back and he does throw a strike. This stuff again it plays well enough to pitch here in the big leagues now if you start second time around they'll go okay well he's not getting his breaking ball over and he may still win because his fastball is that good he certainly can change speeds and three two delivery on the way he's got three strikeouts and he has retired all nine batters face took him only ten pitches to get through that third inning no score. By Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. And by PNC for the achiever in you. Like to open our Major League Notebook once in a while to the page on nicknames. To the Kingston Tree, aware of all the nicknames gone. How about the Cuban Comet, Minnie Minoso? He was around baseball seemingly forever. Born back in 25 in Cuba. He just passed away this past March in Chicago, debuted in 49. Played, you see, with the White Sox, Indian Senators, and Cardinals. Most noted with the White Sox, the Cuban Comet, who used to come back for one game a decade so he could say he had played in all the decades since he started baseball. 
Pitch will be taken for a strike. Snyder at the plate facing Richards for the first time 0 for 2 in the series. And Ender's pitch to him will be taken up high. He and Adam Jones have been two of the best hitters in the daylight hours. Nine for 23, 391 clip in day games. Snyder, Richards continues to have problems finding that strike zone. Well, you talk about the fact that the Orioles are struggling for runs, a little bit under three runs a game in the month of March, or excuse me, of May. And you know, Buck Showalter, if you're Travis Snyder, if you start getting some hits, you're going to play. Yep. And I think that, I mean, that stands for everybody, manager will tell you that, hey, you're not happy with your. Your playing time will start playing and you'll look it in the lineup and it's true. So Buck is looking to see with all the new players keeps talking about it which ones are going to step up. 2 2 delivery on the way to him Snyder will put that one back. Well the Orioles they have had three runs or less eight of the last 14 games that they played. And in the hit department they've had fewer than 10 hits seven straight games and fewer than 10 hits in 13 out of 14. Ball games and the homers have not been a big help because 14 of the last 16 have been solo. Snyder again back into the screen and a two ball two strike count. And of course players will tell you well it's tough to uh, it's tough to hit up here period but it's even tougher when you don't play regularly. So figure it out get some hits and you'll play regularly. That's right. I mean which really comes first comes right. Yeah, that's I mean it, nature of the beast. Yeah, and I mean that is the difference between uh, there's Scott Kulbach first year as the Oriole hitting instructor, but you know, last year you you know you would have seen Marcakis and Wright, and you would have seen Cruz either DH or whatever. So when you go out and get other guys, you're trying to see whether they deserve to play every day. Two two pitch, and that one will miss inside. So he goes full three and two on Snyder. And Travis had got off to a real good start. Uh, they played the. You know, the Tampa Bay shift on him and he kept hitting ground balls a shortstop and nobody was playing there. He hit a home run the left center field here. Three two and he's gone. Yeah, Richards will get the strikeout. That'll be his first. Well Garrett Richards and we've seen him do it now here in the third inning. He, he may be more comfortable with this pitch to break the ball in his fastball commander. And it's early in the game. This is what starting pitchers have to do. Now it's somewhere around the outside corner. Nine pitch at bat and Richards wins the battle. Caleb Joseph coming up. Caleb's had an 0 for 5 in this series. Also has an 0 for 3 against Richards in his career. Caleb, of course, really for a better than a month, his bat was just astoundingly good. He hit 327 in April, 195 so far in May. 0 1 count, 1 down. And that pitch is going to miss by a little bit. One ball and one strike on Joseph. Ryan LeBarnway, the backup catcher. Not getting to play a whole lot. One one delivery on the way. The Orioles still unsure when Matt Weeders will be ready to go. He is not rehabbing in the sense of playing in rehab games. He's in extended spring training ball games. He's caught seven innings. We're getting him into back to back games, then he'll be ready to go to rehab. One two pitch on an off speed breaking ball fouled away. I mean, just think about it. And Caleb had to go through this last year. I mean, he has to learn to not only call a good game, uh, really threw well last year, about 40% of the runners, but you got to play pretty much every day, and then you got to figure out how's your body going to respond to that, and then they're going to pitch to you. You know, hit home runs what in five consecutive games last year, so they adjusted. Did not have a good September, but then really worked very hard on his spring training. As you mentioned, he has a good April now. He's on the radar. Yep. They're going to pitch him a little differently. Two ball, two strike delivery on the way to him, and a swing and a miss late on the heater at 93. Two K's in a row here in the third inning. Yeah, that looks like that little cut fastball he's thrown. The, and he could throw it 93, 96. So a lot of movement. Looks like it's going to stay in the middle of the plate, and then it just kind of cuts to the outside. You just see you hold it off center and pull on it, and you throw it just like your fastball. So you get a. That's what the cut fastball does. It it just has that doesn't have a discernible spin. Very hard to center. 
Here's Manny Machado, two down, and the base is empty. He drew the walk to lead off the ball game, and we'll take the pitch in there for a strike to Manny. They're in the third, no score. We've got only one hit in the ball game. The single by Delman Young. Oh, one delivery, another breaking ball, another one that bends its way in, and the count quickly goes to him too. A good movement on the ball by Garrett Richards on those last two. Yeah, those are plus breaking balls thrown in the mid 90s. And he gets one. him on three pitches. Tag will be put on. That's three strikeouts. He strikes the side out here in the third. Three complete Sunday afternoon, no score. Who's writing on SBNation.com about the celebrations in baseball? Are they excessive? Baseball should be celebrated, not stifled. And those who play generally respect each other while understanding different cultural backgrounds. Those who don't learn to play the game the right way through a trial and error, like Pui, talking about the Dodgers outfielder. She said emotions on the mound and at the plate are accepted because it's an emotional game. The game of baseball isn't static as players shouldn't be asked to leave their personalities in. The clubhouse. Interesting ongoing discussion this year because the celebrations, particularly in Kansas City, have heated up. Yeah. Well, it's fine to celebrate, just don't disrespect. Yeah. And uh, for Carolyn, how uh, how many games did she play? <laughs> Not in the record no. book. Ball to center field. That's going to be a base hit. Calhoun going after the first pitch. So there's the first base runner. Against Wright, who had retired the first nine that he faced, and Calhoun just kind of tennis racketed that one out to left. Yeah, there's the curveball, and uh, try to throw all your pitches. That's what he did the last time, but he threw them for balls. And just the type of game where it could be a leadoff batter, it could be a misplay, it could be anything. You know, Richards doesn't give up very many runs. Mike Wright is just trying to figure out what he needs to do to get a very, you know, this. What second, third time through the order? Gets hitters out at this level. And Trout, with the runner at first, takes the pitch inside for a ball. Well, let's see whether or not they can take advantage of getting that leadoff man on base. We have so many options with Mike Trout, and one of them is just let him be himself because he hits the ball to the right side as, as well as any hitter. That's going to be a bloop to second. Pierce is there, and he'll put it away. One out, Calhoun back. Beginning on Tuesday, the Orioles host the Mariners' three game midweek series. That night is also the season's next Ollie's Bargain Night, presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet. Each Tuesday home game, all upper reserves are just $10 when purchased in advance. Have a great night out. Get your tickets at Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. The return of Nelson Cruz, of course. Some people will say, What's the reception he's going to get? I think he'll get a very nice oh, reception. He, he, he had a wonderful season for the Orioles. Yeah, and I mean, People impact understand. player both uh, on the field in the clubhouse yep. and he had one big contract coming and he went out and found it. 
Here's Albert Pujols. Pujols will take the pitch up high. Pujols fly it out to right field. His first time up. Cruz is uh, right now third in average, first in home runs, and tied for first in RBIs in the American League. Yeah, going into last night, you know, he was leading in all three of those categories. 1 0 count. Runner off first, rips it. That line drive, will it stay up? Headed to the wall, and it's going to hit right off the base. Making the turn, Calhoun will go to third, and down to second base is Pulholz with a double. And a couple in scoring position now with one out. Yeah, Albert stumbled coming around first. And if Travis Snyder he hits the cutoff, man, even though there was nobody covering second base, because uh, again, this is a fastball. He hit a home run on Friday night. He hammers it. So right here, Travis gets it very quickly. And then uh, so Calhoun easily goes to plays in front of him is going to get the third. The pole house stumbles and it, it almost was a single. Buck Showalter will note that in the book. Somebody's got to be at second base on that play, and they weren't. He spent a lot of time in the pregame today talking about defense and coverages and about the fact, uh, as he put it, Orioles are used to catching a lot of balls that right now aren't being caught. That is fouled off outside of first base. So Ibar, he's hitting 244 with runners in scoring position. First chance in the ball game in this situation for the Angels, who are three for 13 in this series. And because of the scoreboard, in fact, as you mentioned, both the teams struggling for runs, you don't want to give up two, so you play your infield back, except at third, and Davis over at first. Uh, Mike Wright's first major league jam. Can you strike him out? Oh, and delivery goes to third, play at the plate. Man, he's got it. They're going to get him in a rundown. Pulholz will go to third base, and they'll put the tag on. Yeah. Well, they get the out on the yeah. lead runner, Calhoun. Well, nice play by Manny playing in. Just in case this happens, and then uh, Ibar just kind of uh, spanks it. Nice pitch by Mike Rod. You watch him down and away, so he has to go cover it, and then you let your defense. And then here's this is what you practice in spring training. Not a lot of throws right there, Caleb, because he knows that pole holes is right in front of him. Just keep running, tag him, and they keep Ibar from getting into scoring position. So runners at first and third and a chance for Wright to get out of the inning as there are two down. Pujols at third, Ibar at first, Giovatella. Well, Gary, the little things, uh, you know, Mike Wright, as we mentioned, he's walked off when he's gotten behind hitters, he's walked off the mound to slow the game down. Sometimes you overthrow. Well, what does he do? He throws strike one, then he makes a good pitch, and he gets the second out. Two down, and the pitch will be taken away. Vitella has done a great job here at 346 with runners in scoring position for this ball club. Getting the uh, second base start. Day after day for the Angels. We're still scoreless here. Top of the fourth inning. Two hits for the Angels. One for the Orioles. Mike Wright. His delivery will miss outside. And the count goes to 2-0. and oh. Yeah, you look at Johnny uh, Gio Vitella. We we saw him when he came up with the Kansas City, and he's never been a home run guy, just a slasher. He hits the ball back up the middle. He's hit over 300 lifetime, 305, up and down. You know, he'd come up for a while, somebody'd get hurt, then he'd go back down, hit 300 at Omaha. So he doesn't overswing a whole lot. Long hold, 2-0 delivery. That'll be on the outside corner. For there's, a strike. there's your sinker, Gary, at 93 and. Giovatella says, I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. He's good at pitcher's pitch. At Norfolk this season against Wright, runners in scoring position is number at 261. To go along with that 3 0 record in six starts that he had. Two ball, one strike count. Giovatella waiting on a ground ball third, and he just oh. missed. Orioles get a break on that one. That was close to going over the bag. Yeah, when it's almost like Giovatella plays Pepper in the sense where that ball was a pretty good pitch. It was, you know, thigh high inside part of the plate. And look how quick he is. Great angle right here. Look how quick he is to it. Mainly because he knows where the bat head is. He's not going to hit a lot of home runs, but his style is not to strike out unless you make a real good pitch. Fans applauding for. Mike Wright here in his major league debut to come up with a big K. He'll take a big out. 2 2. Divatella is a strikeout victim. 
fourth strikeout of the ball game. No runs, two hits, two left on. A good job by Wright who works his way out of a jam. Wade in the ER.com. That well, says so there's some pretty uh, glowing numbers. And uh, Jones and uh, Paredes will hit in this inning. Second time through the order. Pedroia, because he hits Cabrera's Cabrera. And then, uh, Prince Fielder. He's having a great season as a DH. Jimmy Paredes up. Paredes field his choice his first time to the plate. Paredes will. Take the pitch for a strike. Orioles 0 1 0, the Angels 0 2 0. And again, as we've seen in the first two games, all about the pitching. Went after one that he had a swing at while it was bouncing off the plate in a two strike count. Yeah, I think if you characterize the uh, the Orioles offense, they like to hit the fastball a little bit better. Pineda last weekend, I mean, he uh, hit cutters and sliders and 16 strikeouts later. And then Knocked down. Picked up and gets it there in time. Center fielder number seven. There's your fastball, and then kind of boxes it, but picks it up. Gets the out. Probably looking at LA. Probably looking in at Jared Weaver, who uh, had a little trouble with a comebacker. He looked Weaver. like he thought that ball was hit maybe a little harder than what it was. It is he, very hard when you end up about 54 feet to sometimes figure that out. Yeah. And you know, you kind of double clutch, and of course, the Rockets, you just try to dive out of the way and get the glove up, or hope it doesn't hit you. And Adam yeah. Jones on that pitch down and away. Yeah, that's a cut fastball, Gary, at 95, and great movement. And 0 1 count, Adam, and into a double play, his first time up. A one pitch, same pitch. This time he stays away from it, and it is outside. One ball, one strike. Yeah, Garrett Richards has one of those goose gossage uh, windups where he really turns his back, and I mean, it, it's he really uses his body. Watch him just flow towards home plate. Ball kicked off to the side. Kind of comes across a little bit, huh? Yeah, a little across bit. But body. you know, I mean, there, you know, it's it's a kind of a low, very rhythmic windup. Again, I mean, it's, you know, he is six three, well, way over two hundred pounds. It's, so while you, you, you know, you want to use your leverage and your height, you know, Goose was a tall guy, and he would turn his back on you, and then you'd have to, of course, Garrett Richard doesn't have a mustache like Goose did. <laughs> One two delivery jammed him, broke the bat. A little number down to first and a one ball two strike count. So then when you get the two strikes you, you got you got to you got to protect everywhere in and out and up and down and hard and soft. Richards uh, for some reason I guess it's innings pitched he isn't listed in the uh, 
top 10 for opponent batting average. If he were, he would be up among the top three. Well, because of that patellar injury, he missed what the first 17 or 13 or 14 games. So he didn't pitch till the what the 17th of April. Listed in some categories, not in others. And that's a swinging bunt base hit right there. Adam Jones is on. We can see him do it Friday night. He bunted his way on off of Jared Weaver. They gave it to him. This is just how how do I uh, how do I stay alive? And sometimes the one-handed swing. I mean, right there, oh, that's a good breaking ball. All he's trying to do is flick it foul. As it turns out, he gets one of those uh, swinging bunts. They call him. Came into Friday night's game hitting 304 with two strikes. It was like fourth on the list. Perfectly placed on that one. Here's Delman Young. One down. Young, the other base hit for the Orioles. Put one into right field. His first time up. Now the Orioles get their second hit of the ball game. Let's we'll see if they can do anything with it. Richards. Long look over to Jones at first. Young up the middle. He's going to have another base hit. So a couple of ground ball singles and that one died in the outfield. Jones heads up, saw it. He'll go to third base. First and third, one down. Well, I had to go out and do something with Rick Dempsey out of the bullpen yesterday. The, the grass here at Camden Yard is lush. I mean, if, you, if you're a golfer, you want this kind of fairway right here. Maybe cut a little lower. And right here, because trout combination, I mean, the grass is soft. Did have some rain. This drains very well, but trout plays extremely deep. And Adam knows that easily in the third. So now the Orioles get an opportunity with a runner in scoring position. They had a chance in the second inning. Ended up going 0 for 3 in the inning. Another chance here. Chris Davis. Davis flied out first time up. Scoreless ball game. Chris will put the ball in the air, but it's going to end up in the seats. A foul ball. Davis got a great 300 average with runners in scoring position. He had a chance in the second inning in that department when he flied out to right. Yeah, hit it pretty well. I mean, this is where the 53 strikeouts at 122 at bats uh, come into play. You know that Richards is looking, especially if he gets the two strikes to try to strike him out. And a swing and a miss. That one at 94, and an 0-2 count on Davis. And then you know that Chris is trying to put the ball in play somewhere. You know they still have the shift on. Keep it a double play depth. Yep. Jones always tough to double up because he goes into second, barreling hard. 0-2. Richards with that high set, and will come inside to Chris. One ball, two strike count on Davis. Runs have been so hard to come by for both these teams, and you get the chance. Vital to take advantage of it. I mean, the Orioles or Angels could explode yeah. in any inning for runs, but the way it's been going, you can't count on that. Well, that's why the Angels uh, have runners at uh, second and third and only one out. They couldn't get a run against right. One, two, There's close, a good but take. not quite. Yeah, you got to know your strike zone. Now, yeah, Chris strikes out a lot, but if he didn't really trust the swing, he probably would have uh, tried to swing at that ball. Just off the inside corner, didn't chase. He gets that odd hole between third and second because the third baseman freeze has got to play over with a runner there. So he's got a, a whole shortstop hole is open. 2 2 delivery on the way and a swing and there's the strikeout he wanted. That's number four for Richards. Yeah the uh, the book on Chris Davis hard in and then soft out of the zone and that's pretty much what he did and then again you can always talk to, to your young pitchers and tell them what they how you'd like to get a hitter out, but can you go out and execute it? And that's what he did. So now two down, the infield will back up. Steve Pierce popped out his first time up. Pierce three for 17 with runners in scoring position, having one chance in this ball game. Well, Garrett Richards trying to work his way out of a jam in the dirt, not going to do it. Run will score in a wild pitch. We talked about it earlier. That's the second one in the game and the sixth wild pitch of the year, and Jones scores. Now you want to keep the breaking ball down, and then you got to trust your catcher. Sometimes uh, 
Carlos Perez has done a nice job but this ball so far out in front of home plate. I mean look how far it bounces second time that's happened today and the Orioles get the first run of the game. Down to second goes Delman Young. The Orioles on top one nothing. Pierce will take the pitch that'll be outside and the count goes to two and oh. So the base running. The little things that make a difference Jones who was at first ended up on third on the single by Young. As he saw Trout. As Jim said so deep that by the time he got to the baseball that was rolling slowly in the outfield he had no play on Jones at third and that creates a run. Pierce will take it up high three and oh. Yeah this is a kind of ballpark Gary as you know it, because it, it, it plays small that a lot of times it's hard to go from first to third. But if the balls hit slowly and uh, this is the third game of this series it, I don't know if anybody that plays deeper than Mike Trout does certainly doesn't mean he's not a good outfielder because he is but that's that's what he does. Rio delivery hit hard to third handle freeze line drive out. So the Orioles will get a run on a couple of hits no errors they will leave one on base and the O's take the lead one nothing. on Monday that'll be May 25 135 first 20,000 fans 15 and over receive a stars and stripes patterned Orioles barbecue apron celebrate the unofficial start of summer show your birdland pride that's on Memorial Day May 25 tickets Orioles dot com or 888 bird day game now we're talking there backyard barbecue that's you when I first started with the Orioles even in spring training Earl Weaver had a uh, had a coat and tie rule, unless you were going to a backyard barbecue. Unless Boy, did we barbecue you out barbecued a lot. You barbecued the heck out of it <laughs> that, that all spring. spring. <laughs> every day, every meal. 84 degrees. Put on the coat and tie and uh, go have dinner. Right. Uh, here's David Freeze. Freeze, a strikeout victim. Mike Wright, Major League debut, has a run on the board uh, in his column. Pitch taken for a ball. Freeze, Joyce. And Perez coming up. Right looking for another solid inning here. He's retired the first nine starting. Angels got to him in the fourth inning for a couple of hits, but he got out of the inning. One ball, one strikeout. Yeah, Freeze uh, likes to hit against the Orioles. But the high pitch, and not that'll want to work. That's a two seamer. That that's where you take it, the advantage of your third baseman and your shortstop because it, it's it's very difficult to do anything but hit a ground ball to the left side on that pitch. Here's the one two delivery on the way to him and free has started to swing actually he didn't go around on it and then he had to get out of the way. And then the home plate umpire is going to immediately look down at first did he swing. Certainly not by choice, but how far did the bat go? Nope. 
2 2. 2 2. And in the air to right. Young. Yeah, Sunfield, high sky may have yeah. lost it, finds it, and puts <laughs> it away. Not, not easy. One away. Take a look at our PNC minor league Let's report. Alex Murphy, a catcher. Oh, we like catchers. I, I love it. And uh, <laughs> if you could catch and throw and hit a little bit, you're going to have a chance. I mean, uh, look at Caleb Joseph, he worked his way through, learned to catch. Weeders gets to Tommy John, and now a starting catcher for the Orioles. Here's Joyce grounded out his first time up. And the pitch taken away for a ball. Alex Murphy, Baltimore resident. Grew up in Maryland. 1 0 pitch on the way, and that is a strike taken. Murphy was a six round selection 2013. It's only his third year of professional baseball, played at Calvert Hall. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way, and that's going to get by. And the two ball one strike count on Joyce. Well, it's, it's funny how the uh, scouting report is pretty much right on on Mike Wright. You know, has four pitches, slider and fastball the best, but he's tried to establish the other ones. End of the day, this probably be a fastball away. Well, oh, no, oh, change up. Well, that's a, pitch. That is definitely the best change up he's thrown in a fastball count to a fastball hitter. And Matt Joyce, who's really struggling, does not read it at all. Two ball, two strike, shift on in the infield against him. He goes the other way, only went over there. Manny Machado's got it. And mm -hmm. he'll get it. Manny came up as a shortstop, and he just got cut to play it. This game falling right in line with how these ball clubs have played of late, the last couple of years. 15 games, 10 decided, two runs or less. Six. Have been one run ball game, six out of the 15, and four out of the last six have been decided by just one run. Now, taking this series, the Angels, of course, have won the series, winning the first two. It's the first time in three years Angels have won a series. Now, they haven't played that many, but the Orioles have won the last four series against the Angels coming into the season. Perez, their catcher, the 0 1 delivery on the way. Breaking ball tied him up, but it'll miss up high. 1 1. Pretty impressive debut yeah. here in the fifth inning for Wright. He hasn't walked anybody. He struck out four. No runs, couple of hits for the Angels. 1 1 put up in the air, high left field. Snyder backing up, warning track, and he's back. 1 2 3 inning. Wright gets him out of there. The Orioles lead it 1 0. Along, take the advice of our great chef Jim Palmer here. This is that apron that you will there get. There we go. You wear it well. I'll be over later. Uh, burgers, perhaps. All I need is a drool cup, and I'll, I'll have it. Yeah, I'll get through this rest of this uh, 
Anyway, <laughs> now no, when nice. you grill, what do you like to grill most of all? Chicken breast. Uh, we do fish. Do fish. A little swordfish. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Anything. A little barbie. Do uh, you do any ribs? Ever do ribs? No. 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 Well, I won't be over then. No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> really. All right. But what anyway, do you think of Mike Wright? I think he's great. I think the big question is, I, Buck Showalter, the Orioles aren't scoring a lot of runs. Neither are the Angels. Off day tomorrow. When do you go to the Oriole bullpen that it's well rested? That dad has been pitching very well. So I think that'll mm. be really the question. And right, hopefully the Orioles, that. they'd say, well, let's get about another two or three runs, which won't be easy against Richards, and we'll take our chances. One nothing ball game, bottom half of the fifth inning. J.J. Hardy leading it off. Hardy, Snyder, and Joseph, bottom part of the order against Richards. Swing and a miss. There's a cutter away. Hardy popped out his first time up. Richard says walked one and struck out four. Wright has no walks and four K's. Here's the 0 2 delivery and Hardy. That easy swing fouls that one back. Well, he's pitching, uh, talking about Garrett Richards, pretty much what you expected, keeping the ball in the ballpark. The only walk would lead off batter. Struck out the side, uh, what, in the uh, third inning and uh, doesn't give up a lot of runs, and nor do their starters. So what that's nine out of ten games, two runs or less for the Angels on this little run that they've been on. So an 0-2 count on Hardy. The Orioles picking up the run on a wild pitch. And that's another one that's yeah. in the dirt and to the backstop. Well, that's where you want to throw it, and you know you're taught. In between innings, I ran into Rick Dempsey in Denver. You still always say, you know, caught over 20 years. You say, hey, just execute your pitch. I tried to keep it in front of me, and usually you did. One, two, swung on a miss. There it is again. That's five Ks. Boy, he throws so hard, you're kind of hitting off the fastball, and then again, the good breaking ball. You go, why don't you not swing at it? Well, the good breaking ball, you, the spin is so tight, you think it's going to stay in the zone, and then it just dives down and away. One down. Here's Snyder. Orioles got the leadoff man on first two innings. Have not had the leadoff man on since. Snyder also a strikeout victim. His first time up. Ground ball to the middle. That's where they weren't. And as Willie Keeler said, those are hits. So Snyder's on with a one out single here in the fifth inning. Those fans never miss a game update behind the scenes moment or exclusive contest. Follow at Mass and Orioles on Twitter for all the latest Orioles buzz. Again, that's at Mass and Orioles on Twitter. With one away, Caleb Joseph coming up looking for his first hit in the series with an 0 for 6. He too, a strikeout victim, his first time to the plate. Orioles with four hits in the game off Richards. And the pitch will be taken up high for a ball. Orioles continue to be a team that goes after the first pitch. So you wonder maybe opposing pitchers taking a look at that might <laughs> throw a ball on the first pitch or at least the strike that's on what's very outside second, of the plate. Yeah, second in the American League, 30 uh, what 32 and a half percent. Take a look at our yeah. Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers. Yeah, but look at the number, what the result is. Uh, so they're the second they, they swing at that first pitch the second most uh, but it's a good result. Great average yeah. 379 on first pitches which they swing at 32.5 percent of the time. One ball one strike delivery on the way and a swing and a miss on one up high at 93 and a one two count on Caleb. Yeah the breaking ball so good when you see a fastball you go I'm going to go get it and that one out of the zone. Snyder being held Kraus at first. One two count Richards. Popped up right field. Calhoun. Runner halfway. Second out of the inning. Snyder back to the bag. You can see the outfielders struggling a bit with that glare today even when they have the glasses on. Bring up Manny Machado, a walk and a strikeout on Manny. Mm. 
And he's going to have his base bowl. That's bowling. Tomorrow. Sold out. Raising money. For kids in the. City and rec programs. Have a great time at it. He'll do that tomorrow on the. So called day off. Machado he pops one up in the air. That's shallow center field. Second baseman Gia Vitello. He can't see it. He doesn't know where it is. Shortstop good play Ibar. Ibar stayed with him. Even though he was not the. Uh, primary intended for that pop up. And that'll do it in the inning. No runs one hit one left on base. The Orioles on top. Ibar with a good defensive play to help the second baseman. Ooh, It all comes together when I'm balling, hit my name, call it. Stay focused, they notice your very flinch in the cinch. And since you want to be a champion, fight the battle every inch of the game. All we do is win big, win big, win big, win big. Mike Wright, 25 years old, major league debut so far. So good as the Orioles have the 1 0 lead. Seth Rollins. You may have seen on there the WWE champion there in town and Adam Jones before the game came out in a stare down not a smack down <laughs> stare down on Seth. But finally he had a smile. <laughs> He's a big uh, fan and Adam's got his own. WWE championship belt that he keeps. And brings out whenever the wrestlers show up. <laughs> Pitch on the way and a swing and a miss. You uh, watch the stare down before the game. Uh huh. Uh huh. And Adam cracked. I <laughs> <laughs> couldn't help it. Uh, he's got that belt right over his shoulder, though. And that pitch by Wright is going to miss. Sixth inning. Orioles up one nothing. Wild pitch. That's the run. Mark Krause hitting ninth, getting the start at first base in the ball game. Right, 10 out of 17 first pitch strikes. Jim was talking about going to the bullpen. Well, the most pitches Wright has thrown this year in a ball game is 87 at Triple A Norfolk, and he has already gotten up there to uh, 67 so far in this game. That's pretty efficient. Well, it is, and but 67 in a uh, one nothing game is uh, maybe a little bit higher than the actual pitch number. And my only my point is, you, you want it to be a positive experience. You have a well-rested bullpen, and you have a number of options you can use. Brad Brock has really been pitching well, so you know, we'll just see. Did hang a slider to Perez, and got him on a fastball at 95, five K. But the one thing about Caleb Joseph, uh, you know, he's done a nice job of steering this rookie by using all his pitches. But at the end of the day, this is this is his best pitch. And that's 95. We've seen 98. And, and the other thing is he, you know, he's gone two and one, three and one, three and two right here, and then he's had the ability to throw a strike. So certainly in control of his emotions and his mechanics. 
One away. Top of the order. Calhoun base hit. He has popped out. Angels have only two hits off right. Calhoun single, double by Pujols. They both came in the fourth inning. Wright has retired the side in order in four innings of this ball game. Pretty impressive. Not a lot of clean innings recorded anymore in Major League Baseball. 0 1 count. And that'll miss inside and low. Tyler Wilson is uh, with the ball club. He's not on the roster. He's on that so called taxi squad. He got called up yesterday, 25 year old right handed pitcher in the just in case category, and he's still here. Orioles have to make a decision by 8 o'clock tomorrow night whether or not he stays here and goes on the roster or goes back to Norfolk. Some of that will depend on how Bud Norris feels tomorrow, how Chris Tillman feels tomorrow. Decisions on the off day regarding their pitching. 2 1 delivery on the way, and that one foul back. Yeah, Ray Miller, when he was pitching coach here in Baltimore, there is Bud Norris, and you know, he's on antibiotics and he does have uh, bronchitis. But Ray used to always say you can kind of get an idea or a handle on a pitcher, so to speak, uh, when you get into those fastball counts, and as he just did, and still don't have real good swings. And he's had a very good fastball. Right with the 2 2 delivery on the way, and that ball, he had a fist that towards no man's land. Jones will get there, though. Two down. A reminder first pitch for game one of that special single admission doubleheader that's going to be on Thursday, May 28th, is now 105. Previously, it had been a four o'clock game. Tickets for the originally scheduled game, Monday, April 27, will be valid for this traditional twin bill. There are tickets still available, but won't last. It's a two for one. 105, May 28 against the White Sox. Go to Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird for tickets. The White Sox have picked the pace up a little bit, maybe securing or making their manager's job a little more secure. They're a game below 500 now. They've won four in a row. They're only five games behind the Tigers and Royals, tied for first in the Central. Pitch is there for a strike. Trout has struck out and popped out. Well, the surprise team in that American League Central, unless you talk to Paul Molitor in spring training, of the Twins. Mm. Came on Hall of Famer, I mean, terrific player. He's first year as a manager. Ground ball to Hardy at short. Boy, Wright's been impressive. That's another one, two, three inning. That's amazing. Five out of the six. Brought to you by DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com and a promo code Triple Play for free entry. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer at Camden Yards on this Sunday where the Orioles are on top. Mike Wright, amazing debut. Six innings, giving up only a couple of hits. 
and has picked up five strikeouts and perhaps most amazingly in a major league start hasn't walked it enough. I mean he's gone to three balls what three times. But he just has really slowed it down and then I, I mean there's trout. You know he threw a great change up in a fastball count earlier last inning and then he gets trout to bounce a, a ball to shortstop on a on the best change up of the afternoon. Garrett Richards almost as good but a wild pitch has cost him a run. Brady's up will go after the first one followed off the catcher Brady's 0 for 2. He has grounded out reached on the fielder's choice. He's also got a consecutive game streak going of reaching base 18 consecutive games that he's been on base. Manny Machado had gotten up to 20 and uh, had that one broken. The uh, ball game last night 0 for 4. Followed off and Richards ahead on the count 0 and 2. Now you could see why uh, Garrett Richards is the real deal with. With that kind of cut fastball and breaking ball. As you mentioned, other than the leadoff walk, he's been all around the zone. 0 2 delivery on the way and a breaking ball. Did not go around on it, came way inside on him, but with late bite. Now Richards with a one ball, two strike count. Pitchers again dominating. These starters for this Angels team have been outstanding of late. 5 and 0, a 1.54 ERA in the last six games for the starters. Fouled off, count will stay at a ball and two strikes. And all about the pitching. Mike Sosha's ball club, two games above 500 now. Longest win streak of the year at five. 1 2 delivery, the off speed pitch back to the mound. Richards makes the flip. And we hope you'll join us on Tuesday, day off tomorrow. The Orioles will wrap up the homestand three against the Seattle Mariners. We do not know the starters for that first game Tuesday for either team yet. Our coverage on Mass and Two, 6:30 O's Extra, presented by Southwest, followed by game coverage at seven. All the access you need right here on Mass. See the Mariners; they're marked. They're third in the American League West. They've lost three out of four. They will play the Red Sox at home. Afternoon game out there, 4:10 Eastern Time, and Nelson Cruz, the former Oriole, third in the American League in average, first in home runs, leading RBIs. Jones will take the ball to right field, and on the first pitch handled by Calhoun, two quick outs. Yeah, they hit uh, what six home runs on Monday, and they've scored five runs in their last four games. I think you probably figured it out. Big night up in Seattle where it's tough to hit. Not that night, of course, they score 11 runs and then they struggle. So two down. Delman Young's had the day. Orioles have four hits. He's got two of them. Two singles. One into right field, and the other one up through the middle into center. So Delman up to 298. That one to third. That'll be foul. Great pitchers duel. Bottom half of the sixth inning. A wild pitch run. Jones scored on in the fourth. Only one up on the board. Little breeze blowing out the left now. 0 2 delivery and a nine iron shot he missed. That strikeout number six for Richards. Side retired. Six complete. One nothing O's.
only one. Uh, Jones, who'd reached on an infield hit, went the third on the uh, single by Delman Young. So there's Trout striking down. Mike Wright in his Major League debut really has pitched well. Both of the pitchers have been outstanding. One nothing. Uh, and you can see the Angels have been on one of those rolls. They've won 13 of their last 16. They've been pitching the daylights out of the, the baseball, and the Orioles really a little bit behind them. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. So, seventh inning. Right goes to it. And we'll have the middle of the order. Albert Pujols, Ibar, Giovatello. Bahulas has had a double, one for two in the ball game, two for 11 in the series. Shift on against him. He will foul that one back. Got the double in the fourth inning when Calhoun had the single. The only two hits the Angels have picked up. Wright came through, though, and was able to retire the side, leaving a couple on base and nobody crossing the plate. Oh, one pitch to him again off the end of the bat and foul. 302 average here in this ballpark for Albert Pujols. He's had uh, three home runs here at uh, Camden Yards. Well, he won, yeah, he wanted another one there. That curveball, just, you know, sometimes you, you hang a curveball, but you hang it just where they can't quite get to it. And that's what happened. But he does get ahead, so now make him go chase it. That'll go to second. Steve Pierce is there. Yeah, well, Pierce, Pierce plays second base like he's played there all his life. I mean, he comes in, he gets good reads, he's turned the double play. And if uh, you're an Oriole fan and you've seen him, he can play pretty much all over the field. Nice to plug him in. And he didn't let that line drive right through the third baseman bother him. I love Buck Showalter's comment this morning talking about Pierce. He said, We invented Pierce at second base. That's that's the term he used. And a great tribute to Steve for the job he has done there. Wherever he's been, nice to play outfield, first base, and second. The pitch taken for a strike. Ibar 0 for 2 in the game, 3 for 10 in the series. Ibar's got a seven game hit streak going, hitting 409 over the last dozen games. 0 1 pitch to him, a looper that probably will fall in. That's a base hit. The dying quail to center. He's on with a single in the seventh. You're trying to get to outs. You're looking for those that'll give you a chance to win. But show all of this year and hope the starters would get up to about 19. Well, they're trending that way. And uh, Mike Sochi was talking about it that at the time he, he thought that the, the Tigers and the Angels, maybe he was talking about the American League, are the only, and of course you have the DH there, are the only two teams that have gotten more than uh, than the, the 18 outs or right at it. That's six innings. Yep. He said if you, if you can't get to the 18, 19, 20. Boy, at the end of the year, your bullpen burned out. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, that's again the premise of trying to just get as deep as you can. And when Dave Wallace came over along with Dom Chidi, you can make your pitches, you can maybe get that extra one, two, three outs because of the quality of the pitches, even if you're maybe a little bit tired or maybe the velocity goes down a mile or two. Giovatella 0 for 2. Runner on at first base, one down. Swears to bunt. We'll take the pitch inside. With one away, if he's bunting, obviously bunting for a base hit. He did have Manny Machado back at third base. Well, he got, he's yeah. seen of the signs from third. You're kind of wondering. You would think Gia Vitella, if you're Mike Sosha, you you've watched Mike Wright kind of dominate your your offense. You're struggling for runs, so I don't think a hit and run or put Ibar in, in, in motion. Make it a run and a hit is out of the question here. Runner not moving. The pitch will be in the inside corner for a strike. Trying to manufacture a run here. Get the small game tied up from the Angels' perspective. Or have a big inning, get some people on base. And then you can see Jay Vitella looking down at uh, Gary DeSarcina because you just never know. You know, Mike Sosha played most of his career in the National League. And when you're pitching as well as his team is pitching, you're, that's what you're looking for here. One, and maybe it'll turn into two. One ball, one strike count. I bar not moving down to third. Chance for two. Manny Machado pierced the pivot. They got it. Finding a way to get out of trouble. Seventh inning stretch time. What a debut for Mike Wright.
We got to do a little bit about the literature. His favorite book is Little Lefty, which is a book about a little left hander who learned how to pitch, kind of like Buck Showalter. And then I said, All right, what do you want next? Buck Showalter said. The one I'm trying to get him find now is the other one is the kid who batted a thousand. You read it? You got it? I don't have it. I read it. Took it out of my elementary school library. This kid perfected the art of fouling balls off. And he'd take pitches and, t and he would foul them off till he got four balls and he walked. In the last game, he got a base hit to win the championship and batted a thousand. There it is. There's the book. It's been uh, about the fourth or fifth time in reprinting. And uh, <laughs> Buck said, Can you find that? I didn't tell him, but I already have. The kid who batted 1,000. Uh, Buck was really kind enough to join me. I'm doing a thing called Hitting the Books, a blog, which is at MassinSports.com, trying to get some of the uh, players, managers, broadcasters' favorite books, and just uh, talking about some of the literature that's affected lives. And uh, Buck said, gee, maybe I shouldn't do a little lefty. Maybe I get a, an adult book. And I said, no, 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 that's what we're talking about. Well, I'd go for the earth. Uh, for what? Roger Kahn's book called The Earth. 40, oh. 47, 57, Yankees, Dodgers. Uh, and uh, the Giants. Uh, yep. I mean, the only time I ever had three. And there are so many life lessons in, in that book. And when did you first read it? Do you remember? Um, well, when I was an adult, not when I was when a you kid. were an adult. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's the one you think of first. Well, yeah. Says, I mean, Tell I read me the Boys this summer, but no, Roger Kahn. No, yeah, yeah, you know Roger Kahn, and you know, you, you know, he was a writer, I think, with the Daily Mirror or whatever, yeah. and then. Uh, you know, he always said that, uh, you know, they always accuse baseball writers of living in the past because you're yeah. comparing generations yeah. to, to other generations. But it's a marvelous book. I got to record you and put you on the blog. Ooh. A swing fouled off by Davis, who is 0 for 2. He has flied out and struck out. One thing I found, it's amazing how many, when you ask people, all right, tell me about a book without putting any limitations on it. How many people go back to a book they read as a child? Giovatella, that's a fine play. Yeah, in the shift from the outfield. Yeah, he timed it. Uh, and, you know, that's when you really trust your ability as an infielder. And he just made sure he took an angle to get to it. He knew it was running. And a little Derek Jeter, except Jeter played shortstop. It's a Jeter Most throw, though, isn't it? Yeah, it was. A, so, one away, these two pitchers putting on a show. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning, 1 4 0 for the Orioles, 0 3 0 for the Angels. Well, if you're Garrett Richards, uh, he's, and I've been there, you figure, you know what, I gave up one, yeah, infield hit, got unlucky. You know, Delman Young got Jones the third, then I wild pitched him in. The way I win this game is that I stay out there, I got 91 pitches going, and I don't give up any more runs. And then my offense comes to the rescue. And who they'll do that against, nobody up in the Oriole bullpen. Mike yep. Wright pitch count within reason. Orioles have not warmed up anybody. They've got a couple stretching but not throwing. One ball, one strike count. Steve Pierce swing and a miss. Richards has been just like this the entire ball game, locating it, some pitches. Yeah, it looked like he tried to throw 96 in the first inning, and that's his only walk. But he has really settled down, pitched well. One two yeah. delivery, and that's on the outside corner, and that's seven strikeouts for him. And that's 95 on the corner, the black, little black edge of the plate with late life. I think Steve Pierce thinks it's off the plate, and it might have been. But, you know, take a look right here. And this is what, see, Steve Pierce knows that ball's away. Our center field camera, as most cameras are, or maybe a little bit off, but that overhead camera doesn't lie. We've had three umpires with big strike zones, and, mm -hmm. and really the run scored this this series kind of. Goes right along with the, the bigger umpires. There's Brad Brock getting loose. So. First you know, action. May, you know what they may do, Gary, with, with Mike Wright, is that in, in, you know in the old days you, you would stay out there till the winning run came to the plate. See, so you, you know, you'd go out there, pitch the eighth inning, mm -hmm. the ninth inning, whatever it might be, and if you got somebody on, that's when they go to the bullpen. You might see an old-fashioned managerial yep. job by Buck Showalter. Hardy with a 1 1 delivery to him, a ground ball to the middle. High bar charging. Another good play. And that'll do it. So Richards gets it done in a hurry. We've completed seven. We'll see who's on the mound for the Orioles when we come back.
reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Oregon. That is Drexler. He is stealing a base, as kids do every Sunday. They put him on a clock. You got to run out from the right center field area to second base. Get it and run back and smiling all the way. Good job, That's Drexler. A long way there, too. A long way. It's not like he trained for it either. No. Just pulled out of the stands. So right back on the mound. As David Freeze will stand in here in the eighth inning. Freeze, Joyce, and Perez. Trout, at least, in the middle of the order, is going to get another at bat in this ball game against somebody. Pitch to Freeze, and that is taken for a strike. He is 0 for 2. He is struck out and flied out. Well, now all of a sudden he's getting the secondary pitches over. And he got a big strike out of uh, Gio Patella to get out of the inning with runners at second and third. Down to first foul. And then he's uh, thrown as high as 98. That was a strikeout to Trout. He's thrown 90. That was 91 right there. He's pitched in and out. He's thrown a couple of curveballs. Very, very impressive. 0 oh, 2 delivery on the way, and that one just gets away. Up high. One ball, two strike count. No walks, five strikeouts, three hits. 57 uh, strikes in 30 out of the zone. 87 pitches. So he has reached outs, his yeah. season high in pitches thrown at Norfolk. 1 2 delivery on the way, and a swing and a miss. 97. <laughs> Well, that's the four seam fastball. You hold it, put your fingers across the seams, a little uh, uplift. He's 6'6, six, six, and then he elevates right out of the zone to a high ball hitter out of nowhere. In the eighth inning, you get 97. Mm. Mm. That's right. <laughs> I mean, Joyce has grounded out twice. He is real. You know, you always talk about veteran pitchers adding and subtracting. You know, you, you throw one real hard, take a little bit off. I mean, right there at 89, maybe a little two seamer, but major league debut. You go from 91 to 97 when you need it. Hasn't pitched since May 6 at Norfolk. 1 0 delivery on the way, and that's going to be a base hit towards the gap. Adam Jones over. And we'll hold him to a single. So Joyce, one for three, gets the hit with one down here in the eighth. This past February, the Orioles served as the mission engagement chair of the Heart Association Baltimore Heartball. The Orioles, the event chair, Sun Trust, raised more than $679,000, and you can be a part of it. Learn more. Buck Showalter's coming out. The fans are coming to their feet. What a performance put on by Mike Wright. He will leave the ball game with a chance to be the winner. No walk, six Ks. How can you ever forget this moment?
Well, Mike Wright, Major League debut because of uh, illness and sore backs. Trout down 98. Really is pitch marvelous game. Didn't strike anybody out. I mean, uh, didn't walk anybody. Gia Vitelli down on strikes. Moved the ball around. Went to 97 miles per hour here in the eighth inning. And uh, that are the, is the numbers. Uh, and now Brad Brock will come in. RT, AT&T call to the bullpen. AT&T proud partner of the Baltimore Orioles. AT&T mobilizing your world. And they hope that Brad Brock can mobilize uh, the Angels. A lot of fastballs. Real good change up. You know, and then an occasional slider. Perez with the runner at first base and one down. There's Joyce who picked up the one out single. So a lot of runs early. Five runs in his first four games of the year. And then uh, other than the game up in New York against the Mets, has really pitched well. You can see the home runs uh, by the left handers. Delivery on the way. Sliced by Perez the other way. Brock has over the last eight outings. Three runs, 11 and two thirds innings, settling it down to a 2 3 1 ERA over that span for the Orioles. Yeah, his velocity's gone up, and uh, Brian Mattis uh, warming up behind him in the uh, Oriole bullpen. You know, just tried to stay a little bit taller. He's tall, he's 6 6. So make sure you throw the ball downhill. And, and then, uh, as we saw last year, he, he comes over from San Diego, he goes 7 and 1, an integral part of the, uh, the Oriole bullpen on the way to 96 wins. Mike Wright waiting watching. After a tremendous major league debut, but only a one nothing lead. One one delivery runner going and the hit and run was on. You saw Perez trying to put that ball into right field as Joyce took off, but he fouls it off and it goes to one and two. It's kind of what we were talking about is that Mike Sosha, the skipper of the Angels, just trying to somehow manufacture runs. And again, he likes Carlos Perez because he can make contact as he's seen a lot of them and out of the regular catcher until Perez came up and he's done a nice job both hitting and behind the plate one two delivery and a swing and a miss 96 on a heater up two down well we talked about increased velocity and it might be that change the wind up try to be a little bit more upright make sure you get over and the other fact he really hadn't pitched that many innings. So maybe a little extra in the tank. So two down runner remains on at first base. The Orioles will try and leave him right there. As Brock will work against the number nine hitter Kraus has struck out twice in the ball game. And he will take the pitch for a strike on the outside corner. Yeah, if you're Buck Showalter, you have an option here. You have Mattis, who dominates lefties, but you, he won't face a lefty. He'll get Crone or maybe Cowgill. So who do you want pitching to whom? And the question is, Brack's going to pitch to Kraus. Left-handers only 185 off Brad Brock this season, and he gets ahead of him in a hurry. Two pitches that were on the outside corner and down, right on the outside edge. No oh, two count. Krause's base hit last night for the second run was a little breaking ball, so you don't have to throw him a strike here. Oh, two delivery, and he got him. So Brock comes on and strikes out numbers eight and nine. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. Orioles three outs away from a W. We'll try and add to their one nothing lead.
ball games. There you go. Three and six last year on the way to 96 wins. Two and five in the two runs game. So this year, five and 11 in the close games. Leader in one run wins is Houston. They are 10 and two. Oakland is one and 13 in one run ball games. They have lost their last 11 consecutive one run. They're game. almost even in the amount of runs they've scored and given up, and yet they're what 13 games under 500. And the Orioles bat here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Richards has gone the distance for the Angels. One run, four hits for the Orioles. No runs, four hits picked up by the Angels. And a little dribbler. This is going to be a tough play. Getting to the bag is Richards, who fielded it himself to record the out on Snyder. Follow the Orioles all season with MLB.com at bat number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment, any moment in game highlights, stat cast, radio broadcast, replays, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Yeah, they got to hold their breath when Richards covers first because that's how he hurt the Pateller last year. It was a routine uh, three to six to one double play. And I'm going to give him a little bit of time here. I bar coming in and said, at least we're not taking you off the <laughs> field in a stretcher. <laughs> Richards equaling his season high. Seven and a third innings worked here in this ball game. Orioles scored on a wild pitch fourth inning. Adam Jones led it off with a single. Young followed behind him with a single, and Jones went from first to third. And that set up the wild pitch run. Ball in the air to center field. Trout. Caleb Joseph is retired. Two down. The Orioles have their closer, Zach Britton, ready to go in the bullpen. Angels this season shut out a couple of times. The Orioles have only one shutout to their credit this year. Here is Manny Machado. Machado is an 0 for 2 and a walk. Manny with one hit, 10 at bats in the series. Was that by chance a 1 0 game? By chance. Was it? Yep. I mean, this, the one shutout? The one shutout. Because I was kind of looking through things trying to find the last time they won one nothing. Not that I because I was going back to the seventh inning last night. That's the way they would have had to win. They won the last game of uh, 2014 one to nothing. Not easy games no. to win even in this uh, day of reduced scoring. Well either way I mean because it, it a blue double and this game, the one run the Orioles scored on a wild pitch. I correct myself. I, it is a four nothing game okay. against Tampa Bay. So the one nothing game, the last game of uh, yeah. of 1996, and or excuse me, 2014, and win number 96. Breaking ball that'll miss inside. No, you like to see. I mean, has not thrown many breaking balls up in the zone. So when he throws it. It's usually down and away. Three ball, one strike delivery on the way to Machado. Ground ball towards Ibar. Cuts it off. No, base hit. So Manny is on here in the eighth inning with a two out single. The Orioles will pick up their fifth hit of the game. Yeah, Mike Sosha, he's not moving. He's yet. And the way Richards is pitching, I, I don't think he wants to come out of this game, even though he might. Ooh. Because he just want to. Uh, I know it's a new age and culture and all that, but you know, Richards thinking, hey, this is the only way I have a chance to win the game. I mean, he really has pitched a well pitched yep. game, and you don't want to be leaving it. But they're looking down the road. So she's already made the signal to the bullpen. Richards will come out, not happily so. Leaves the game, could be the losing pitcher.
lot of times used to say, well, sometimes the best games I pitch are ones that I don't win. So he can't win. He can lose, as you mentioned. And again, I mean, 105 pitches, 72 strikes. No power breaking ball, really pitched well. Only the uh, infield hit by Jones and then the ensuing wild pitch to allow him to score for Garrett Richards. Mike Barn comes on, uh, great change up. How about your Twitter, Twitter handle is Mr. Mush28. Well, he's got a great change up and, and again, uh, around 91, 92 miles per hour. He's got a little bit of a breaking ball. Uh, but the change up always in the back of your mind. And uh, doesn't walk a whole lot of people. Lauren just turned 24 years old, only his fourth professional season. He came up through the ranks last year uh, to play with the Angels in 60 ball games. Ended up with a four and four mark. So the Orioles with a runner on at first base, two down. Joey Paredes up, single by Manny Machado. Lauren isn't allowed to run seven out of the last eight outings that he's been involved in. Throw over, mm, uh, getting back Manny Machado. Now Manny's the only Oriole that really uh, will steal bases, five out of six. And Perez throws real well. The recent regular catcher for the Angels, so five out of six when they tried to steal against him. There are two down. Warren's delivery, off-speed pitch that'll miss outside. That was a changeup at 72 miles per hour. Orioles trying to win their two game losing streak and also win the five game win streak of the Angels. They would love to tack on something here in a one nothing ball game. Eighth inning. Runner not going and another one he pulls back on and him way out in front of it. Well, that's the uh, change up. 41,733. Great Sunday crowd. 41 7 3 3 here at Camden Yards. No wristlet Sunday. That's right. A little bag they gave out. Down at one and one. The series has been all about the pitching. Six one ball game. Angels won yesterday. Late run scored. The opener three one that the Angels won. One one delivery on the way. Another one off speed at seventy two. Jimmy Paredes is gone one one thousand two one thousand. And I wait long enough. Well, that's what they're, you're going to find. He's such a good fastball hitter. There, there's Richards on the bench. I mean, they're going to try to get him out with breaking stuff. Richards just threw that 95 mile power cutter in on his fist and then went away soft. Do one delivery to him, another off speed delivery. Givatello over, only play at first. Didn't get him. Paredes will pick up the infield hit. Well, there is no such thing for an infielder as a routine play if you run hard. And because Giovatello's playing pretty much straight away, he's not up the middle. You know, maybe you got a soft tosser, a lot of change ups, so maybe he's a step. You can see how far right here. I mean, right here, he actually doesn't backhand it. And by that time, Jimmy Paredes is running hard, and you can see the foot get down. And they call him safe. So it looked like it was pretty routine because he didn't hit it hard, but not when you air it out down the line. It's a big chance for the Orioles. Adam Jones base hit fourth innings would score the lone run on a wild pitch. One for three. Two down and two on. 300 hitter with runners in scoring position and he delivers this one to the gap and his way back. It'll take a hop off the wall. Manny Machado will score. Paredes being waved home. Imars throw to the plate. Not in time. And Adam Jones with a two RBI double. And the Orioles get those big late hitting runs. Well, their starters have been so good. 10 out of 11 games now with two runs or less. And here's a slider that just doesn't get to the corner. And that doesn't work against Adam Jones. Drills it up the corner, and then it's going to be a foot race. Ibar makes a great throw. He's their first cutoff guy. And it's a bang, bang throw. And Paredes just in there. Nice slide to the outside part of the home plate. Perez can't get the tag down. 25 RBIs for Adam. Fouled away. Young. Couple of singles, and he has struck out. 
So the Orioles three runs on seven hits. One of those runs on that at bat will be charged to Richards. So he gives up two runs, five hits, seven and two thirds innings, and Mike Wright, Hart's got to be pounding. Delman Young waiting. Wright came in with his heart pounding in his major league debut. Comes out of the ball game, shutting him out four hits, seven and a third, and now suddenly chance to be the winning pitcher today. And a three nothing lead looks a lot bigger in the ninth than one nothing. Pitch is inside by Morin. Two ball, one strikeout. Jones big lead at second base. Young will take the pitch outside. Lawrence faced two hitters, giving up single and a double. Well, the Orioles getting to the 24-year-old right-hander. See, not holding Adam close at all. Two down, he'll be running anyway. Three one delivery on the way check swing one around home plate umpire the call on it. Three and two. And a timeout asked for is. Warren wants to talk to Perez his catcher. Understand uh, the Marlins have fired Mike Redmond, their manager. Announcement coming today uh, after their ball game was completed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Living down there, I mean, I read the Palm Beach Post every day. And that one uh, ticky tack left field, mm -hmm. line drive, a rope. Joyce there to haul it in. The Orioles add a couple of runs on three hits. They leave one. The Orioles go to the ninth with a three nothing lead. And brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by coons.com when you're talking cars, you're talking coons. Gary Thorne and Jim Palmer with this big house on this Sunday. Mike Wright waiting for the outcome as he's got a chance to be the winner. And Zach Britton will try and put it away for him. Well, ground ball pitcher, uh, worst outing in a long time. He came in to, to get work yesterday, 3 1 ball game. And and gave up uh, what four hits three runs he said the first four pitches were pretty much right in the middle of the plate trying to figure out because he's not pitching as much as he did last year when he had 37 saves how do I uh, get in maybe a little bit better groove you know talking to Dom Cheaty trying to extend maybe throw some sinkers uh, you know down and into righties and, the, and he said the minute. Calhoun came up he said I got into a groove because I had to extend so. 
it's still a save. The Orioles still need three outs, and this is his job to, to get him. He will face Calhoun, top of the order, and the pitch will be taken for a strike. David Lowe's come on defensively to play in left field. Snyder out. Britain has uh, had a 1 0 mark and a perfect save mark, 3 for 3. Lifetime against the Angels, who have hit only 205 off him in six previous games. 0 1 delivery, Calhoun towards second base. Pierce is there. There's one. There you go. Ground ball, that's what you like. One of the uh, reporters asked Zach Britton, so yeah, well, at least you got your work in. And he goes, no, 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 no. You're missing the point here. I don't like to give up runs. I wanted to get my work in, but I didn't want to give up four hits and three runs. Yeah. And then he did a David Letterman. I'll be better today or tomorrow. After the save right here. Seven out of eight in saves for Britain. Pitch inside. This is Trout. That's why those two runs bottom half of the eighth inning looks so much bigger. You get this power part of the order coming up, but you can afford it. You don't want to, but you got a little breathing room to give up a long ball if it should happen. 0 for 3 in the ball game for Trout. Ground ball, that'll go to third. Machado in the big hop. Got him. Yeah, look how fast Trout gets down there. Made it close. Yeah, he really does. And he plays the game like Adam Jones does for the Orioles. There are no such things as routine ground balls. And the amazing thing about this game, the Orioles get three runs. What keeps the eighth inning when they get two of them is the infield hit by Paredes. The first run was on an infield hit by Adam Jones. Yep. Wild pitch scoring the first run, two RBIs, Jones double in the eighth inning, bringing home Machado and Paredes. Albert Pujols up. He's had a double, one for three in the ball game. He's 0 for three off Zach Britton. Pujols will take it for a strike. Yeah, if you notice with Zach Britton, and I was asking him today, I said, you, you really don't throw for corners until you get the two strikes. And he said, no. He said, and if you look at Caleb Joseph, you will see the target. It will be pretty much just down in the zone. Yeah. Right there, kind of just a down, get it. Right well, there. to left field. That's going to fall in front of low for a base hit. So the Angels will keep it alive here in the ninth inning. Bulls now two for four in the ball game and six. For 13 in the series. So instead of the potential tying run on, they've got to get to the on deck matter to get to that situation. Now anytime you only have a one run lead, we talk about it all the time. Now everybody's yelling, get a guy on, and then everything changes. Eric Ibar base hit, one for three, eight game hit streak for Ibar. And he will take the pitch for a strike. He's got a two for six lifetime off Britain. Orioles had not been swept here in Baltimore by the Angels since 2002 and trying to avoid it here today. I bar to short. Hardy will go to second. Not going to get him. And they will get the potential tying run to the plate. The only play he had, and with Pujols hustling down, he gets into second. Yeah, your secondary lead when you don't have a lot of speed, Albert at 35, is so important. And he gets a nice secondary lead off first, so the force play is really non existent. You know, JJ gets the throw up a little bit, gets to it right there, a little top spin, snap throw, and because it's high, and right there you think you're going to get your first major league win, and now Giovatello is going to come to the plate. Two on, two down, ninth inning. Giovatello and 0 for 3. He's faced Britain only once, 0 for 1. And that will be in there for a strike. Base hit credited to Ibar, who's on at first, Pujols on at second. Britain after save number eight. Here's the 0 1 delivery. 0 2. Now just get back to where the ball dives, and that one did. Yeah. 
Runners their leads. Here's the 0-2 delivery. Giovatella's gone, and the Orioles and Mike Wright are winners on this Sunday. No runs on two hits, no errors. Two are left on base, and the Orioles come away with their 16th win of the season. Wright wins it 1-0. Richards the loser 3-2, and, and Britain save number eight.